Well, welcome again to another podcast, Down to Earth, but Heavenly Minded. I'm your host, Irv Risch. And as we move forward, we're going to be going through the entire New Testament. Uh, and with that, we're going to do a commentary afterwards. And uh, with that said, let us just move on to our next section. And thank you for joining me. Chapter 12 About that time Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James the brother of John with a sword, and when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. And when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. Now when Herod was about to bring him out, on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He did not know that what was being done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went out and went along one street, and immediately the angel left him. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. When he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. And when he knocked at the door of the gateway, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer. Recognizing Peter's voice, in her joy she did not open the gate, but ran in and reported that Peter was standing at the gate. They said to her, You are out of your mind. But she kept insisting that it was so, and they kept saying, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they opened, they saw him and were amazed. But motioning to them with his hand to be silent, he described to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Tell these things to James and to the brothers. Then he departed and went to another place. Now when day came, there was no little disturbance among the soldiers over what had become of Peter. And after Herod searched for him and did not find him, he examined the sentries and ordered that they should be put to death. Then he went down from Judea to Caesarea and spent time there. Now Herod was angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon. And they came to him with one accord, and having persuaded Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they asked for peace, because their country depended on the king's country for food. On an appointed day Herod put on his royal robes, took his seat upon the throne, and delivered an oration to them. And the people were shouting, The voice of a god, and not of a man. Immediately an angel of the Lord struck him down, because he did not give God the glory and he was eaten by worms and breathed his last. But the word of God increased and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had completed their service, bringing with them John, whose other name was Mark. Acts chapter 12 Seek at the persecution by Herod and his death, 12 verses 1 to 23. 12 verses 1, 2 Satan's relentless attacks on the church continued. This time, the persecution came from Herod the king. This was Herod Agrippa I, a grandson of Herod the Great. He was appointed king over Judea by the Roman emperor, Claudius. An observer of the law of Moses, he went to great lengths to please the Jews. 
It was in pursuance of this policy that he harassed some from the church and killed James the brother of John with the sword. It was this James who had been with Peter and John on the Mount of Transfiguration with our Lord, and it was his mother who had requested that her two sons might sit beside Christ in his kingdom. This chapter affords an interesting study of God's ways in connection with his people. James was put to death by the enemy, yet Peter was miraculously delivered. Human reason would ask why such preference should be shown to Peter. Faith rests on the love and wisdom of God, knowing that ill that God blesses is our good, and unblessed good is ill, and all is right that seems most wrong, if it be his good will. Frederick W. Faber 12 verses 3 for the Jews responded so enthusiastically to the execution of James that Herod was encouraged to do the same with Peter. However, it was by then the days of unleavened bread, and executions were not exactly appropriate during religious holidays. Also the Jews would be too busy with their ceremonies to appreciate the favor, so Herod ordered Peter to jail during the interim. The apostle was guarded by sixteen soldiers in four squads of four soldiers each. 12 verse 5 The church in Jerusalem prayed earnestly for Peter, especially as the death of James was so vivid in their minds. G. C. Morgan comments, that force of earnest, halting prayer was mightier than Herod, and mightier than hell. 12 verses 6 to 11 That night, when Herod planned to bring him out, Peter was sleeping soundly, manacled between two soldiers. Someone has called his slumber a triumph of faith. He probably remembered the Lord's promise that he would live to be an old man, John 21 verse 18, and so he knew that Herod could not kill him prematurely. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared, and the cell was flooded with light. Tapping Peter on the side, the angel ordered him to get up quickly. Immediately, the handcuffs fell off. Then with short, crisp sentences, the angel told Peter to dress, to tie on his sandals, to throw his cloak around him, and to follow. Though in a daze, Peter followed the angel past the first and second guard posts of the prison. When they came to the iron gate, it opened automatically, as if by an electric eye. It was only after they had passed through one street of the city, and the angel had vanished, that Peter came to himself and realized it was not a dream, but that the Lord had miraculously delivered him from the hand of Herod and of the Jews. 12 verse 12 When he stopped long enough to consider, Peter realized that the disciples would be praying at the house of Mary, the mother of John. Mark. It must have been an all-night prayer meeting, since Peter's escape from prison probably took place during the early morning hours. 12 verses 13 to 15 Peter knocked at the door of the gate and waited. A girl named Rhoda, Greek, Rose, came to answer, but was so excited when she heard Peter that she failed to open the gate. She ran back to announce the good news to those who were praying. They thought she was crazy and did not hesitate to tell her so, yet she kept insisting that the apostle was really at the gate. They said it must be his guardian angel, but she stated positively that it was Peter. These believers have often been chided for their unbelieving prayers, they were actually surprised when their prayers were answered. But any such criticism is probably influenced by our own nervous self-consciousness. Instead of chiding others, we should be greatly comforted that God answers such faithless prayers. We all tend to be unbelieving believers. 12 verses 16, 17 Peter, in the meantime, had been standing on the doorstep, knocking. When they finally opened the door and he stepped in, all their doubts vanished, and they broke out into great expressions of joy. He quickly quieted them down, gave a brief account of his miraculous deliverance, asked them to convey the news to James, probably the son of Alphaeus, and to the brethren, and then departed. It is impossible to know where he went at this time. 12 verses 18, 19 When morning came and Peter was missing, the hapless soldiers were thrown into a state of panic. For Herod, too, it was a traumatic experience to be so outwitted. Nothing that the soldiers could say sounded at all convincing. In fact, the lameness of their testimony probably infuriated the king all the more. So he ordered them to be executed. He then left for Caesarea to nurse his wounded pride. 12 verse 20 For some unknown reason, Herod had become very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, two commercial ports on the Mediterranean. The people of these cities took advantage of his holiday in Caesarea to ingratiate themselves with him, because they depended on importing grain from Judea. 
so they befriended Blastus the king's personal aid, and through him requested restoration of diplomatic relations. 12 verses 21 to 23 One day Herod came forth in all his royal finery to address the people. They shouted deliriously, the voice of a god and not of a man. He made no effort to refuse such divine honors or to give glory to God. Therefore, an angel of the Lord struck him with a fearful disease and he died. This was in AD 44. Thus, the one who had executed James to please the Jews is himself slain at the hands of him who was able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Herod reaped what he sowed. D. Paul's first missionary journey, Galatia, 12 verse 24 to 14 verse 28. 12 verse 24 Meanwhile, the gospel expands its outreach continually. God makes the wrath of man praise him, and the remainder of wrath he restrains, Psalm 76 verse 10. He makes the devices of the people of no effect, but the counsel of the Lord stands forever, Psalm 33 verses 10 and 11. 12 verse 25 After they had fulfilled their mission in Jerusalem by delivering the gift from Antioch, Barnabas and Saul returned to Antioch, taking with them Mark, a cousin of Barnabas, Colossians 4 verse 10, who later wrote the second gospel. It is impossible to know whether Barnabas and Saul were in Jerusalem at the time of the death of James, the imprisonment of Peter, or the death of Herod. Many Bible commentators feel that chapter 13 marks a distinct break in the book of Acts. Some even go so far as to call it volume 2 of Acts. The Apostle Paul has now definitely come into the place of prominence, and Antioch in Syria becomes the center from which the gospel radiates to the Gentiles. Well, this ends another one of our podcasts, and uh, until next time, just remember, God is out here, and you can find out all about him in your Bibles. All you have to do is pick it up and read it. I have mine right here, and uh, God is in this Bible, so please read it. With that said, bye for now. Till next time.